with their best advice to help you stay tuned in and turned on and keep the love lasting in your life. And today, I am so thrilled to have the boutique matchmaker, oh so gorgeous and delightful goddess, Marla Martinson joining me today. Hey, Marla. Hey. <laughs> Happy month of love. <laughs> it is so much fun. And yeah, Marla, of course, is coming from a delicious climate part of the world. Share with everybody where you're hailing from. I'm in Los Angeles, California, but it did cool down for us. It was cold and rainy all day yesterday. Should be this week, which is actually a nice change because it was like summer, I mean, every day. And you just get sick of that sun. <laughs> Well, I have to tell you, love is in the air today, and you know, I am all about helping folks bring someone on like Marla, who is going to help you find, create, and have some of the best dating experiences, and also bring into your life the love of your life. And you. Marla, you have such an amazing background. I just love, love, love your story. So before we get into all your great information and love tips and first date tips, etc., please share with everybody a little bit about your background. I mean. This gal started off as a waitress, then became an actor. She's written so many wonderful books. Go ahead, got to share. Okay, yeah. Well, I since I was when I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a writer, uh, actress. Uh, at one point, I wanted to be a ventriloquist. I think in the fourth grade, you know, my parents bought me a ventriloquist doll for Christmas. I begged for one. I uh, wanted to be the fastest tap dancer in the world when I was in the third grade. After I saw Ann Miller in a show, you know, and I, I mean, it was always the creative stuff. Just every year, there was something new, and my parents were rushing around buying me tap shoes, ballet shoes, ventriloquist dolls, batons, you know, <laughs> art supplies, uh, organ. I wanted to learn how to play the piano, learn how to sing. Found out I couldn't carry a tune. You know, I, I tried it all. So <laughs> I was just like, let me just. I'm a Gemini, so it's like, whoa, two people that doing everything. So I had a lot of exploring, and then uh, I did, that acting was really strong, so when I was 19, I, I hooked it on down to L.A. from Seattle, where I grew up, and started getting into TV commercials and some print modeling, but I couldn't make a living at it, so I went and worked in restaurants. So I was cashiering and hostessing and waitressing and doing a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, I did had that kind of creative life, the struggling actor life. Uh, for about 20 years, I kept up with that. But I always worked in good restaurants, so I made a, you know an okay living and and uh, had a couple of husbands along the way <laughs> that dropped off. But when I was details, uh, right? <laughs> some practice for for the my current husband. But uh, at 39, I said I cannot be a 40 year old waitress. I was still acting, but I could never was able to make a living at it. I think it's because I put more focus on the men that I was dating than my career, right? So that's a big big uh, lesson I learned. Uh, and so I ended up getting a, a gig instead of restaurant gig. I got a gig at a um, a part time gig at a place called Great Expectations. It was a video dating. Service and my husband, my now husband's friend, was the manager. So she hired me, and I was having a ball. I was doing the videos of the uh, customers, like a little movie, you know. And they would say what they wanted in a man, what they wanted in a woman. And I was learning so much about what people wanted, and I'd hear about the dates. And I thought, gosh, I'm going to keep some notes because I might want to write a book. And so I started keeping notes of all these funny stories and tips. And then uh, from there, a year and a half later, I ended up moving over to a Beverly Hills matchmaking firm just on a fluke that I answered an ad. I didn't even know what the place was, and I walked in, and it's this fancy matchmaking place. They hired me to be a recruiter. Uh, long story short, from then on, I became the vice president of matchmaking and was there seven years. Wrote a couple of uh, dating advice books, Excuse Me, Your Soulmate is Waiting and Good Date, Bad Date. And then it was like rolling along. I was on the Today Show. I was signing, you know, doing book tours and it was a lot of fun. And then I, I ended up leaving there because I didn't really like the practices of a big company mm -hmm. and uh, did write two memoir, Diary of a Beverly Hills Matchmaker and then the you know, latest Hearts on the Line, which is kind of real juicy, fun stories about my life as a, as a Beverly Hills matchmaker. And uh, now, oh, so then in 2010, I started my own boutique matchmaking business called uh, Cupid for Hire. And I work with people individually kind of boutique VIP and it's a lot we're just having a lot of fun over here I'm getting you know shooting my cupid's arrow getting people in relationships giving some dating advice and uh, I'm just I mean life is good I can't complain well I, I just have to say I love everything about Marla but what I really really love about Marla Martinson is how she makes me laugh out loud with her <laughs> at her at myself I mean she's just so much fun and you can tell she's just genuine and authentic and real as the day is long and I'm a huge fan of your memoir I've got it right behind me here hearts on the line I howled Seriously, everyone, it is such a great book. I've told Marla many times it really should be a story or made for Bravo or Logo or somebody you know, movie because it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> but what is it that you that really compelled you to, or I should say, speaks to you about being a matchmaker? Right? I, it, to me, it's, it would be as, just as hard as being a stylist or a hairdresser. I mean, it's just you have to get so involved in the person and what they need and what they're looking for. What? What calls do you about this? You, you do, and and luckily I'm a people person. Being a Gemini, I've always want you know been the life of the party and wanting to just very curious and loving just meeting in general. When I meet someone out, if I if they have an accent, where are you from? What's that like? You know, where I just want to know about people and what they're doing. That one of the most fascinating aspects of my job is all these people with different careers, and the men I work with are very successful, and it's just fascinating what they've done to become successful and what they're doing and the companies that they, you know, it's just great and. Uh, 
but they do need some hand holding. And even though they're super successful in their career, they could be multimillionaires. They they could be just confused at love or hurt or you know not even know how to conduct themselves on a date <laughs> sometimes. Right. So, so and, it's and, interesting. And do you work with one type, just one gender? Do you just work with men, or do you work with women? And what kind of client base is it that you have? Well, the men are the paying clients in general. I do okay. have a few women who pay, but it's it's mm -hmm. rare. It's it's the, basically the CEOs, the owners of companies mm -hmm. that are flying around. They're busy and they don't want to go to a bar. They don't want to sit on Match.com. Right. So they just hire me. They tell me you know what they're looking for. And, and they all really want to settle down. They want to get married or have a long-term relationship. I have yep. quite a few guys who'd love to start a family. And I'm like, you know, they're already, some of them are already in their 40s. And I said, you don't want to be that 55-year-old guy that hasn't had kids and is looking for a 35-year-old. It makes it a lot tougher. So let's get moving on this, you know. So. Oh, my so gosh. Can... Marla doesn't hold back, okay? I mean... No, because I have a few of those, and they're, it's not easy. You know, the 30-something <laughs> girls don't want to go that high a lot of times, you know. And, right, and, right, so, right, right. So and... I, I do give it to them straight because I want to cut to the chase and get to the... You know, but, relationship. but what happens when you're working with a career single person? You know what I mean, the uh, chronic uh, dating person, but not commitment. Uh, well, they all want. I mean, I only work with them if they want to have a commitment. But okay. some of them do get. They're so busy that they can't even date. I mean, it's crazy. They'll hire me, pay me all this money, and then I have these dates lined up, and then they don't even. They're flying here and there. They don't have time, and that that's kind of sad because they really want to. But it's just. It's well, hard. it's hard too, and I know that what happens is you know, men are so good at being focused, and we love that, especially in certain areas like the bedroom. <laughs> but they get hunt the deer, hunt the deer, hunt the deer, and I can I know with my own darling man who a senior exec has his own business now, but he gets so hyper focused on what he's doing, and mm -hmm. he really has to work consciously to pull himself back and remember that there's you know more breadth and depth to to life. So I'm glad right. that you help them and and with your candid and good humor. Yes, <laughs> help them understand that they need to, um, you know, really step back and make this a priority. Because I know for a fact one of the number one ingredients for a long-lasting and loving relationship is when you make each other the number one priority in your life. So yes, remember exactly. that, folks. Um, let's talk about some dating tips. Let's talk okay. about first date fun things that folks can do. Because I think this must be such an awkward time that first date. It can, and especially if you're meeting someone through a matchmaker or a dating site where you've never met them before. So you're basically meeting a stranger, and you're just walking in. And so you have one, and, and there's a mentality there, like people think there's an unlimited supply. A match.com, well, if that one doesn't work out, there's, you know, 200 more that have winked at me or whatever. So, which is good and bad. It's good because you can really get out there, and it's bad because you might not give someone a chance. You know, one little thing, and they're out. And, and I want to encourage people to realize you're both nervous. Somebody might say one wrong thing. Don't just rule them out. Uh, you know, if their clothes aren't exactly, the, you know, the style you like, listen, Ladies, you can you know work on that. With <laughs> if you get a good, the most important thing is to get a good, loyal, honest, loving man. And Absolutely. and they're not you know every guy's not like that unfortunately. So when you get a good one, there's a lot, some things you can work around. <laughs> so you want to make a good impression on a first date. You um, put your your cell phones away. You know unless you're a doctor or a parent and you're gonna have an emergency because mm -hmm. I'll see people they're texting they're with their phone and then oh the other gosh. person is just so rude and it's habit yeah. like we're checking and, and things mm -hmm. like that. So put that away. Um, uh, when you're on the date, I still see people talking about their ex a lot. And uh, even if the other person asks you, "Hey, you know, well, you know, Joe, what happened with your? Why'd you get a divorce?" And then that Joe opens up a whole, "Oh, that bitch, she took me for everything I had, or she's da and going on." And then the person's like, "Whoa, he's bitter. He's not over the ex. He's not ready for a relationship. All these c conclusions come, you know." Yeah. And same with the ladies. Just uh, you can say something for 15 seconds. You know what? We grew apart, went our different ways. I wish them well, and that's it. So you always want to keep a positive note. Well, and you just made a really great point, which is sometimes. It's good to have little snippets of what you want to say, all nice and handy, so that if all of a sudden you do want to go, well, then it was all over. <laughs> and then you go, no, 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 I got to stay on point, right? Yes, yeah. And everybody loves it. One, the big one that I hear from both people is all the other person did was talk about themselves. They didn't ask one question mm -hmm. about me. And everybody loves to feel important. They love to talk about themselves. So listening skills, asking them questions. Gosh, where is your favorite place in the world to go on vacation? What's your favorite wine? What you know? What kind of workout do you do? You, you, know, you look like you're in good shape. Maybe you can give me some tips. Get them talking about things they love. Keep it positive. You don't need to delve into childhood. Uh, you know, I had a bad mother. My father, daddy didn't like me. You know, I, I was bullied at school. You don't need to get into all that stuff uh, that people tend to tend to get into. So just keep it positive, light, because you just want to see whether you want to see that. Do you want to see that person again? Is was right. there a spark? Is there potential for a second date? That's really what the first date's about. Not to pull out your list and say, let's see, do you match all these things? Right. <laughs> and of course, I'm always telling women, yeah, you know, it's nice that you want green eyes and long lashes, but with, when they get up in the middle of the night with a baby, you really don't care. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good point. Good point. <laughs> and and also, I. It, what does a first date look like? Is it a coffee? Is it lunch? Is it skydiving? I mean, what happens? Oh. What do you suggest as far as locations and stuff? Yeah, usually the people in my group, the guys will just take the girl out to dinner or lunch, you know, because they're more the financially affluent guys, so they can afford a nice dinner or whatever. It's fine. But a lot of people are on a budget. A lot of people are dating a lot, and you don't want to put a lot of uh, money into it. So, yeah, coffee date's fun. If you live in a place like Los Angeles, hiking, um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you're on the East Coast, ice skating might be fun in Central Park or, or something that you can 
you can do things and talk and, and always right. go into it just thinking, gosh, I'm going to meet uh, an interesting person. Don't put that pressure on, is this my soulmate? And, and, and then it's swirling around your head. It's so nerve-wracking. So yeah. just go to have a good time and, and just you're just meeting another person right now for that first date. Don't put too much pressure. As a as an online uh, sorry as a boutique matchmaker, Marla, how does the whole online scene work? Because you know, so many people do match or Cupid or whatever online. They're very busy putting together just the right profile and just the right look and feel. How do you? What do you do as a as a boutique matchmaker? Well, for for my clients, I do that. So I make them okay. a profile, and I often suggest they go and get professional head headshots and professional shots taken. So many people will send me these pictures with their friends in a bar or at the beach or with a baseball cap or sunglasses. Or it's just so unappealing because people look so much better in person. You see the personality come out. So you know, I send a lot of my clients. I'll even pay for it. It's a couple hundred bucks. A great photographer in town and takes some real great smiley shots, and it makes all the difference. So so as is online, you need a good profile, a good bio, uh, good pictures. So I do you know take care of that, and then I actually handpick. Uh, their matches for him, and I send them the bio and profile of the person, and get them mm -hmm. all excited. And yes, she's excited to meet you. He's excited to meet you, and and wow. uh, then I'll get the guy the phone number, and he can take it from there. But but I really polish that up. And for people, you know, I do offer a service of writing profiles for people if they need it. They can go to my website because it's tough to think what do I say about myself. And right. sometimes people will start writing the negative, like if you aren't serious about a relationship, don't even bother to write to me. And I don't want any loser. You know, it gets all that <laughs> negative stuff coming out because women have been bombarded by yeah. you know guys. So you want to write a nice, fun story about yourself where you get in all the all the great points, but it's yeah. really just real fun. So let's talk about what happens when the date is over. I, you know, does your guy call you? What happens? You know, and how do you break the news either way? Like he's like Gaga for her, and she's like, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I get, feedback, I, I get feedback from both both parties, and uh, I do have to say that sometimes. But I'm very tactful, and hey, you can't predict chemistry, it's really not anyone's fault, so I'll just right. nicely say, you know what, she thought you were a fantastic guy, somebody's going to be lucky to get you, but she didn't have the right romantic chemistry for a second date. Right. And, and I do have a couple guys that are just heartbreakers, I mean, they are gorgeous, tall, wealthy, charming, down to earth, and every girl that they meet just is crushed when if he doesn't feel it, and one of them's already, and I got him in a relationship, and one is still, you know, looking, but it's just like, and then they feel so bad, and they know it, and but they're so down to earth. They know that they, the girls are disappointed, but they're like, oh, I don't want to hurt their feelings, and they're, they're just those gems of guys that, it, you know, right. if I could just clone them, like have a hundred, I'd be, you know, be a billionaire. <laughs> Well, you know, what happens when, and I know that this is a trade in guys, they, they love to provide, they love to protect, and you know, communication is so key in any relationship, but what happens if you know, you're, you had this wonderful, meaningful, and this can be, you know, either gender, the guy or the gal, you know, five-hour date where you talk about everything, and it's so wonderful, and then you hear crickets, there's no second date, etc. you know, what the heck? Well, and that, unfortunately, women often take that as, this is my soulmate, we got along so well, look, it was five hours, we had a great time. I used to do that when I was single, I'd spend the most amazing time with a guy, have, you know, sexual chemistry, everything. It's like, how could he not want to see me again? It was so great. And I'd never hear from him. But I get the real feedback from the guys. And even if, you know, look, a guy could, they, what do they say? Like, you know, cold pizza is still pizza. It's still good. You know, even if they're not, even if the girl is not like their version of what they're going to settle down with their dream, if she's cute, if she's fun, they can have a great time. They can right. have a couple drinks. They can talk. They can kiss, make out, whatever. And the girl thinks it's true love. And they're like, you know, she was, she was pretty fun, but she's not my, my soulmate. Guys right. can just separate that so don't take it personally if that does happen because he might just there might be something about you that he doesn't think fits right it really is never about you who's ever being, feeling that they're being rejected it's mm -hmm. never about you it's you know I like to always remind people that life is uh, is for us it's not it's happening for us it's not happening yes. to us and right. uh, what I love about you Marla is that you're a coach you're like this this third person working it's like having an agent <laughs> working on deals and so I just love that about you and I love that I, I can't imagine um, not hiring someone like you because I would love to have that person who's giving me the honest feedback giving me prepping me for the questions it's just like hiring a coach for life it's like hiring a coach for interviews, mm -hmm. acting roles, ventriloquist yeah. opportunities. <laughs> um, <laughs> but how about Valentine's Day? What's some of the problems that we can run into in Valentine's Day for those who are dating or are on the path, on the journey of finding their soulmate? It becomes this like committed couples circle. It, it, folks can feel left out and it's you know, it's really, frankly, it, I know it's the love season and I always mm -hmm. love expressing love, but I find yeah. Valentine's Day can be a real setup for disappointment and, and mm -hmm. not feeling great. It can. I actually even wrote a short story about uh, Valentine's Day. If people go to my website, www.marlamartinson.com and join my newsletter. You get a free uh, download of my, my short story. It's called Amateur Night. And it's about when I lived in Chicago and I was <laughs> so single. Good. I, I was single and I used to dress, I was a waitress and, and I was always single on Valentine's Day back then, like for five. And I'd have to wait on, you know, as a waitress on all these 
people getting engagement rings and in love and drinking champagne, and I was going home to my little dog and you know, a, you know, a, a cold <laughs> beer. Where, yeah. So I and, and women just put so much pressure on Valentine's Day, like, oh, I'm a loser if I'm a. Lo it's you know, it's it's a commercial holiday uh, to sell teddy bears and chocolates and you know, chocolate strawberries and whatever. But. I, what I used to do is before at my dinner shift at the restaurant, at steakhouse, I would take myself out to a lovely lunch, go sit at the bar at this you know local place that I knew the bartender. I'd order myself a glass of champagne and a steak sandwich when I used to eat steak sandwiches back then. And I just treated myself, and then I went and I made some good money at work and and had fun with my coworkers. But um, you you want to make well, I like making the whole month of February the month of love. So what can you do to give love? It's not just about you know do I have a date or or do I have a, a soulmate or a honey in my life for that one day. Make it, can you volunteer at a pet shelter? Can you volunteer and feed the homeless? Can you call a friend and offer to babysit? Can you send out some beautiful cards to your to your friends? Uh, some little funny little fuzzy socks. It's with hearts on them. It's it's winter. Whatever. Just uh, think about how can I bring love into my life and other people's life in the month of February. And that's what I like to do. And I think it'll take the pressure off of of uh, that one you know night that you don't have a date. That's right. And I love that advice because it gets you out of yourself and into serving the world with your wonderful, mm -hmm. delicious self. And, and folks, seriously, go sign up for Marla's uh, newsletter because the book, the story, Amateur <laughs> Night, is a hoot and a howl. Oh my gosh. I mean, such entertaining writing. What did you find so appealing about writing? How did, when did you find out that you were such a great writer? Well, I, I like to write since I was about, in the third grade, I was probably about eight, and I used to start, uh, I was writing poetry all the time. And I would sit there and when I was at my grandmother's house and I'd read her a poem, she goes, well, you can just write a poem like that, you know, and I was writing all these things and I was observing and then I started writing short stories and I always, and this is something that it's interesting because people out there, most people have a book in them and most people that I talk to wish they could write or want to write or they are writing, uh, so sometimes they'll ask me advice and for years I didn't write but it was always in the back of my mind and, and you know, this might date me but when I was, you know, was trying to write, there were no computers or laptops right. or word, pro, word, you know, or Anything. so I had a typewriter, you know, and it, with a blank, you know, white out. <laughs> <laughs> trying to, and I didn't know uh, where does the comma go. Even you know how to. I was like, I can't even figure this out. Who and who's going to want to read what I write? I didn't. I was just confused. I had the my you know I wanted to write a screenplay. I wanted to write a novel. I had all these ideas, and I was too afraid or confused right. to do it. So uh, then about 2000, 2000, 2001, one of my friends, his name's Brad Thor. He's a New York Times bestselling author from Chicago. I knew him from twenty years ago, and I saw all of a sudden I see. Brad is a writer. He's got a book out. You know, he's got a couple books. I didn't know. I haven't because I'd moved from Chicago away. We hadn't talked mm -hmm. as much. And I and I he's on the New York Times. I said, well, if Brad can do it, I can do it. <laughs> but Brad's brilliant, by the way. He's fantastic. But I ca I called him one day and I said, Brad, I said I, I don't even know where to put the commas or the right right. And he says, Marla, neither do I. That's what editors are for. And I was oh, like, yeah. okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and do. And then the, so that was turning in my mind about him. Then a couple years, a few years later. Uh, I still hadn't, you know, started writing, but my husband walked into my area where I work, and this was, and he didn't know, ever know about my desire to write. I'd never spoken about mm -hmm. it. He walks up to me and he goes, "God told me to tell you to write." And oh, I said, I, "I said what?" He goes, "Yeah." I said, "He goes, forget about the acting because I was still trying to act. Forget." It. I said, "I don't want to forget about the acting." He goes, "I got the message. You better follow up on it." He said. Oh, so then I, I and I was like, "Wow!" So I did, and I started, you know, writing. And it's fun, and and you know, I'm not a New York Times bestseller yet or anything. But you know what? The important part is the journey. Do what you love. Make it fun. Don't make it a chore. I write uh, about every week. I write a, a article on yourtango.com. I'm an expert yeah. on there, so I write on different subjects and just to bring out the creativity, um, inspire people, whatever it is you want to do. And and if you can't get a publisher, self-publish. I mean, there's so many options these days. Absolutely. So, you know, and, and and you don't have to worry about sitting down and writing a whole book. You know, blistering yourself. Write one page a day or one page every three days, and in a year you'll have a whole book. So just make it make it fun. Don't put that pressure on yourself. I love that. And, she's so, and Marla, you're so right about you can always get an editor. An editor. I have perfect. a wonderful editor. Yeah, I can't. If I put it out before it's gone through, you know, forget it. <laughs> I need a little bit of my book. I mean, I need a little, I need some help there. So, uh, so much great advice. So you and your darling have been together for a few years. How long now? Uh, we met May twenty first, two thousand one. So God, what does that make thirteen yeah. now? Yeah. Yay. So we sell, we really hit it off from that first meeting and started seeing each other. So we can't we count that as an anniversary too. And then our yeah. our wedding anniversary October fourth, where we got married in Mexico City. So uh, yeah, so that's and, coming up. And you know, I'm always about helping everybody have a loving and lasting relationship. So do you have any tips that you have found to be very helpful, especially since you've been together for you know you've gone through the hills, the valleys, the tumultuous mm -hmm. when life happens, and since you yes. want a tailspin. Yeah, my husband has good advice. He says, uh, have a short memory. <laughs> so when you argue about something, which we squabble, I mean, look, he's a passionate Latin musician and, you know, loves to micromanage uh, everything. And I'm, uh, you know, in air sign, like, leave me alone. I <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm studying crystal healing right now. I'm going to be a crystal healer. And, oh, I, and, I was and, and I was talking about, he heard me on the phone telling my friend Julie, yeah, well, to, I, I'll graduate after eight weeks. And he comes in, he goes, graduate, graduate with a B for bullshit. He says, what is it? <laughs> 
what is this? He goes, you're losing your mind. And he, then today I'm going to go to the, new, the Conscious Life Expo, you know, see a psychic yeah. friend. And yeah. he's yeah. like, just concentrate on your matchmaking, you know, make, make the money. Yeah. He's very practical, and even though he's a musician, so, and I'm like doing my crystals and my, you know, out-of-body experiences. And he, but you got to just let each other have your interests. And, and I know he thinks I'm a little nutty, but then he sees it makes me happy. So, you know, it's, it's, there's never, you're never going to find somebody that every, and people have that misconception that when you find your yes. soulmate, oh, it's perfect, we're never going to fight, we're going to think the same, everything's going to be lovely, we're going to cut our carrots the same way, we're going to like the same foods, we're going to, you know, and it's yep. not, it's a soulmate really could bring up your, you know, crap, yes. and, and things that you need to learn, uh, and grow, yes. so it's not all going to be perfect. No, it really, it really, that. yeah, it really is about deepening your relationship with yourself. When you're with somebody, they really hold up the mirror, you don't mm -hmm. get to hide out and be a jerk by yourself. <laughs> And so someone's there always prepared to give you feedback. Yes, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And you do learn a lot, so it's wonderful. But I, I, it's absolutely always worth the work. I talk often about how relationships seem to be so disposable, like so much else of our life, parts of our lives. Yeah. And you have to do the work because what blossoms as a result of you going deeper and doing the work in your darling is this new relationship that keeps evolving, growing, opening up. And yeah, there's sometimes where you just think there's it's never going to happen, never going to work out, but it can, really. I'm not talking about abusive relationships, no. of course, yeah, uh, no. but I just think, you know, try to keep tuned in. Communication is so important uh, and, and everything. Um, what do you have now that's new? Because I know you're so busy writing. I think I saw a new book on your website. I don't have a new book. I mean, Hearts on the Line is my latest, yep. and that's Good. a really fun, it's on uh, Amazon, Kindle 299, yep. and then hard copy. It's really fun. And so uh, fun. yeah, and then uh, even my Amazon, or my short story's on there for 99 cents. It's fun. <laughs> um, and then I'm writing on your tango, and I have a workshop I'm doing in LA um, coming up on Tuesday, and you can find that on my news and events on my website. That's going right. to be like in Santa Monica area. Uh, that'll be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, just keep up with me on my on my website for, for new oh. things. I'm trying to write a new book. I've only got the first chapter done, but it, I'm so busy. It's crazy. Yeah. That I and I've got to follow my own advice. <laughs> yeah. You know what I forgot to ask you, which is like to me the most important question you ask anybody who's giving dating advice. When can you have sex with the person that you're dating? Oh, yeah. I not on the first date. I would say. You know, a lot of us have done that. I've done done that in the past when I was dating, and and it usually now people will say, oh, I had sex on the first date with my, and we got married, and uh, it'll happen sometimes. But generally, if you're looking for a long term relationship, there's no rush, and people think they're in love after one date, two, three. Everybody's on their best behavior in the beginning, the first month, two months, three mm -hmm. months. You're showing your, it's your, the hormones are, you know, the oxytocin is going, floating around, and, and you're kind of, it's, it's a, a false view of, of what it's really going to be like long term. You know, it's great when it starts out great, but there's no rush. Give it a chance to know somebody. I mean, you don't want to get a disease. You don't want to get attached. Oxytocin attaches a woman to a man, so you sleep with him, and you think you're in love with him, even mm -hmm. if he's a jerk. So be aware of that. And for men, be aware that that happens with women. So that's how you get a stalker. That's how you get those women that just won't leave you alone because they've, they've bonded with you because you slept with them. And because guys can just do it and think, oh, I'll sleep with her, but I'm not going to marry her or whatever. Right, so, right. So yeah, be careful. That's so take your time. a good reminder about the oxytocin gals. Yeah, this is a brain chemical, mm -hmm. and it can get in the way of us having a, re a reality check <laughs> on how we really truly feel about somebody because the, the cuddling hormone, I call it, it just, it, it's, it's genetic. It goes way back to the cave days where we were protected by men and it just yeah. kicks in and it takes us back to our cave women selves and, and it makes us bond it made us bond so we'd stay with the man to raise the child and you know right. stay there and it's so powerful I it yeah. used to grab me I mean I would be mourning you know the guy's not calling me back and I'm in love with him and it's some creep you know I mean I was like bad judgment I was out at a party or you know whatever I was like what was I thinking but it took months to wear off ah. Like yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. How funny is Marla? I'm still laughing over the. Oh, you know, we dice our carrots, slice our carrots the same way. Oh, well, you know. thing after another. <laughs> and you know, speaking of sex, I know you're going to go be on our good friend August McLaughlin's radio yeah. show on Monday. So let's do a quick. Let's. I'm going to do a yeah. shout out to August. Oh, and August. here you go. Cameras on you now. Yeah, she is the best. She's so much fun. Yes. And you can always find August at hashtag Girl Boner. Mm -hmm. oh, isn't that's that it, funny. That's yeah. exactly what she's about. So, Marla, any last words of wisdom you want to share with everybody before we wrap up? Well, I always like to say, never give up. There's a top for every pot, and uh, stay positive. Don't focus on that you don't have a relationship. Get into that delicious feeling of he's coming or she's coming, and I'm so excited. But in the meantime, I'm having a ball, living my life, and spreading the love. Oh, thank you, and thank you so much for joining me today. Everybody, really download her, her you know, parts on the line, her short stories, anything that she writes that Marla writes, because seriously, you'll be hugely entertained and we want that. We like to have that wonderful escape and you can live vicariously through some of her adventures. I really feel that life prepared you to be a matchmaker, Marla. I mean you really had so many yeah. 
Yeah, it's okay. interesting. I never would have dreamed to have this job, but it's all the things that I went through. It, it does. It's just fit perfectly. It's still, I mean, I'm still amazed. I'm like, what am I doing? How did I get here? You know, it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, everything that happened to you is just a clear thread. You're such a people person. You have an understanding of the fragility of humanity, and yet you're very good at uh, being candid and honest with people and giving them the feedback they need, you know, cushioned in humor and everything. I wish I had somebody give me feedback when I was dating. I really <laughs> could have used it, you know. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you, and you have life coaching experience too, right? That's mm -hmm. what you yes. also bring to the, that's what makes you such a good dating coach. Yeah. yeah. Try not to go it alone, gals and guys. Yeah. Get yourself a good dating coach like Marla. Visit her website, marlamartinson.com or cupidforhire.com. Grab her books. And I just want to say to everyone, thank you so much for joining me for another oh, lively, entertaining, and stimulating conversation here on the Loving and Lasting Show. Next Wednesday, I have Aaron Anderson joining me. He is the marriage doctor, and we're going to be talking about how to manage your marriage with kids and all those other responsibilities that can take your eye off what's really truly important which is your relationship with your beloved. I'm wishing everyone a week filled with joy, love and laughter and remember please keep deepening the love, deepening the intimacy and deepening the erotic connection with your beloved self and your beloved partner. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs>